Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. No more bullish predictions for silver and gold. Let's explore. Indeed, they've kind of have stopped concerning what's happening. And this typically is the case when the markets kind of move in a, one direction or another. The psychological effect is that people get discouraged or overly discouraged and, and on one direction. On the other hand, they get overly encouraged. I believe kind of an imbalanced approach when it comes to precious metals. Why? Because I think if you're more realistic about the expectations, you're not setting yourself up for disappointment one way or the other. This is why I'm very careful with analysis personally and also don't want to mislead my viewers uh, with where things are going to go in terms of where gold and silver prices are. And by the way, notwithstanding that I have made some predictions that have been out uh, outrageous in a sense, I mean, not completely insane, but nonetheless, I'll give you an example. I predicted silver would hit $30 last year. Didn't get there. I'm predicting uh, $29 silver this year. I'm sticking with that prediction. Does not mean it'll be true. Does not mean it will come to pass. And also, with the understanding of, of that, uh, you know, I could certainly be wrong. I've been wrong before. I don't take my predictions all that seriously. I do it for fun, for entertainment purposes, as they say. Uh, but you should never take my advice or my predictions to be uh, held true because no one, absolutely nobody, really knows where the prices are going to go one direction or another. We've all been surprised in these markets, and that is one thing that I can say with the utmost confidence. Nonetheless, let's take a look here. Gold and silver certainly have been moving in, a, in odd directions here. And by the way, there is a button that you may see either on your phone if you're watching this on your device or on your on your laptop or desktop computer, it's a thumbs up button. And uh, if you were to press that, you will see the number increase by one. I'm not necessarily saying you should do it. I'm just letting you know that that would happen if you were to take that action. So gold, where is gold at now? It is up just slightly on the day, up some very little 1867 uh, which is still well below that $1,900 threshold that we saw before. So it, it's still kind of depressed. And silver is down even more. It uh, was getting close to testing the $22 level, but it is down $0.08 cents on the day, uh, exactly a third of a percentage point drop. Platinum and palladium are starting to wake up here. And uh, I'm actually surprised that they are as low as they are, considering what I had reported on um not too long ago about the lppa that's the london platinum and palladium association uh, nonetheless that's story for another time so let's see we're seeing some tepid short covering after recent losses according to this article here on kitco from jim wyckoff gold and silver prices are firmer in midday u.s trading tuesday short covering by the shorter term future traders was featured today after both metals hit a two-point month lows on Monday. The bulls are trying to stop the bleeding and downtrend markets that have been punished by a strong U.S. dollar <coughs> and rising bond yields. June gold futures were last up $7.50 at 1871 and 10 And May Comex silver was last up about a cent at $22.65. Economic data a point of the week in the U.S. Federal Reserve Open Market Committee meeting that began uh, Tuesday morning and ends Wednesday afternoon <coughs> with a statement. It is widely believed the Fed will raise the key U.S. interest rates by a half a percentage point, otherwise known as 50 basis points. Um, and the highest inflation, this is in reaction to the highest inflation levels that we've seen in 40 years. The monthly U.S. jobs report is also due out Friday morning. And so, and more than likely, the jobs numbers report are not going to be bad. It may be show more job growth. But you think about it, what's happening here? Well, we're recovering from the pandemic. Hospitalizations are low, and so things are opening back up. 
Things are coming back together, so we're recovering the jobs that were lost. There's no job creation really happening right now. So it's a kind of a moot point when people say that, oh, this is too many jobs have been created. No, they're just being filled back up. I can tell you anecdotally, there's a lot of places that are still looking for help uh, these days. But we see these numbers come out amidst, uh, well, with the Federal Reserve raising rates uh, by half a percentage point. That's going to not do, not going to bode well for gold and silver. Key outside markets today see NYMEX crude futures. Um, prices lower and trading around $103 a barrel. Gas prices are going up on average around the country again. The U.S. dollar index is weaker in early trading. The yield on the 10-year U.S. Treasury note is presently fetching 2.954%. The 10-year yield early this week hit a 3.5-year high just above 3%. That's kind of the magic number here. Uh, the yield on the benchmark German 10-year bond or bund rose above 1% for the first time since 2015. Global stock markets were mostly higher overnight. U.S. stock indexes are mixed at midday. And uh, and actually, you know what, the NASDAQ and S&P stock indexes are near the 12-month lows. We've been seeing a lot of uh, near crashes for the, for the markets. And uh, it's kind of amazing with some of the recovery they're seeing. In fact, as I record this video, the Dow is up 67 points, NASDAQ up 27, the S&P 500 up 20 points. So it's still uh, low compared to what it, what it was, but you know the market I've always thought was overinflated uh, overall. But nonetheless, so there's where that is. So getting to the point here, uh, everybody's kind of predicting lower uh, silver and gold prices. These bullish predictions are pretty much gone. There are some you might find some outliers who are still predicting them, but uh, they're pretty much gone by the wayside. Hedge funds drop their bullish gold and silver bets ahead of the Fed meeting. Uh, this is from Neil Christensen from Kitco News. Federal Reserve's impending interest rate hike, which has driven the U.S. dollar to a nearly 20-year high, is pr prompting gold investors to reduce their bullish positioning, according to the latest trade data from the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. Analysts have noted that the Federal Reserve's plan to aggressively tight its monetary policy to address the growing inflation threat is a significant headwind for gold. Not only is the U.S. dollar hitting long-term resistance levels, but bond yields have pushed to within striking distance of 3% again, as we've talked about here in the previous story, which is the highest level since 2018. However, many analysts have also noted that gold has historically hit a long-term low ahead a new hiking cycle. Ole Hansen, head of the commodity strategy at Saxo Bank, Describe gold's current price action as a dangerous market. Wow, interesting. Gold investors just need to get past Wednesday's FOMC meeting to find new momentum, he said. Interesting. The CFTC disaggregated uh, commitments of traders report for the week ending April 26 showed money managers lowered their speculative gross long positions in COMEX gold futures by. 19,345 contracts to 138,215. At the same time, short positions rose by only 184, by 804 contracts to 57,097. Gold's, gold's net length now stands at 81,117 contracts, down nearly 20% from the previous week. And uh, during the survey period, gold prices tested a support of $1,900 an ounce. Since then, gold has continued to struggle as the market was down 3% on Monday. Although gold is struggling to attract bullish momentum, some analysts note that the market is still relatively healthy as money managers are reluctant to make any significant bearish bets. Philip Stribel, chief market analyst at Blue Line Futures, said he sees gold sell-off as a last capitulation move ahead of the Federal Reserve's monetary policy meeting. However, other analysts are, see further weakness in store for gold. Uh, given the high food and energy prices are here for a significant period of time, and considering that inflation is well-rooted in the economy, it is very likely the U.S. Central Bank will continue to emit very hawkish policy signals for a while yet. This implies that any rallies, like the one over the last few days, may have a limited lifespan. 
and long liquidations may be a fact of life well into the second half of the year, said analysts at TD Securities. And think about that. People are concentrating on necessities and things that are non-perishable where they can put their money to stave off inflation. And that's actually a smart move. I highly encourage that. Get non-perishable foods and other items, toiletries and the like, that you know you can use and store for a while. Of course, that's going to uh, add to supply chain disruption issues, trying to refill those, uh, stock those shelves for those types of things. But a smart way to do it. That's what happens when you have a threat of inflation, which means that probably people are going to be less spending less time buying gold and silver. Although I would encourage probably still getting some, uh, especially if the prices are low. But we'll see how this plays out. Investors aren't just stepping away from the futures market. Daniel Breesman, precious metal analyst at Commerce Bank, noted last week, uh, global-backed exchange-traded funds saw outflows ending a 14-week winning streak. The withdrawal from both groups of investors has probably been weighing on the gold price, contributing to lower prices accordingly, he said in a note Monday. Along with gold, silver is also struggling as hedge funds react to Federal Reserve's impending rate hike. The disaggregated report shows the money-managed speculative gross long positions in COMEX silver futures fell by 12,614 contracts at 44,689. At the same time, short positions fell 1,706 contracts to 18,291. And again, it goes in now to the stuff with, um, with the silver's contracts. But not only is silver struggling as a monetary metal, but its industrial demand is also struggling. And that is key here, folks. That's really the biggest driver, I think, other than uh, tailgating with gold. In other words, falling on the coattails of gold. Silver is affected greatly by the industrial market. A growing threat of global economic slowdown is weighing on base metals. Hedge funds significantly reduced their exposure to copper, according to last week's report. Analysts have said that China is slowing the economy due to it's COVID-19 lockdowns. While infrastructure-focused stimulus implies strong tailwinds for commodity demand down the road, traders' attention remains on the interim flood of metals derivatives into the London Metals Exchange warehouses, which continues to weigh on prices, said commodity analyst at TD Securities. Copper's disaggregated, disaggregated report shows money-managed speculative gross long positions in COMEX High-grade copper futures fell by 11,100 contracts to 58,010. So all of the commodities are weighing. In fact, this has been maybe a case where silver may be pulled down by copper. Uh, whereas when copper went up, it didn't take gold or didn't take silver with it. Interesting dynamics. Precious metal markets are what they are. It's fascinating to witness and see, but it's frustrating as well. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to hang on. Sooner or later, things will come around. What does that mean when things come around? It means that prices will normalize um, and it will start to react as monetary metals in due course as inflation continues to take root and solidify. I'd like to extend this multitude of gratitude to you all and encourage you to please rate this video if you so choose. I told you where that thumbs up button was. Share it, comment, and subscribe.